with hundreds and millions of people spending money on gym memberships, supplements, and training programs every single year. It's no wonder the health and fitness space is now a $700 billion industry. On the surface, it seems like an amazing space. People get paid to do something that they love, while helping others to live happier and healthier lives. It's a win-win situation, right? Until that is, you dig a little deeper. And you see what was originally intended to be a very positive thing turn very dark very quickly. And as such, the industry now purposely causes the opposite effects. Chances are, if you're watching this video, apart from a few brief periods, you find yourself falling into at least one of these three categories. You procrastinate on exercising regularly and you find it hard to be consistent over long periods of time. You find your body actually becoming unhealthier as time goes on. Maybe it seemed good for a while, but again, over the long term, your body actually became worse off. Or, no matter what you do, no matter how hard you train and how hard you diet, you always find yourself feeling at least a little insecure about your body, never quite feeling to fiddle. But why is this? Well, let me tell you. There's a reason that this is a $702 billion industry. And they didn't get there by keeping people satisfied. In this video, I'm going to be pulling back the curtain and revealing why this seemingly innocent thing is actually so evil. Why it's the source of pain for so many people. And I'm going to provide you with pretty compelling arguments of why you should completely stop exercising and dieting. And I'm going to give you an alternative to doing those things. My name is Jamie Barkley, and this is the dark truth of the health and fitness industry. I have always been an incredibly skinny guy, okay, ever since I can remember. And in school, it was a very real insecurity for me, okay, especially my arms, you know, my wrists, my forearms. I just, everyone else, even the people my age, always looked way more masculine than me. This insecurity was eating me up inside, and as far as I'm concerned, it was the sole source of all of my pain and problems. You see, with growing up with idols like Spider-Man and Indiana Jones, and with the popularity of the Marvel movies rising with stars like Chris Hemsworth and Chris Evans, I really did believe, subconscious or not, that I had to get completely ripped if anyone was going to love me. So in 2016, I went to the gym for the first time, and this is where my relationship with health and fitness began. I really hadn't done much research at this point, and I really just thought you went to the gym, worked out, and got big muscles. I was only using the machines, I never used free weights or anything, and I was actually doing probably a lot more cardio than I should have been doing if I wanted to bulk up, which was my goal. In 2016 until about 2021, this year, I had an on-again, off-again relationship with the gym. I would go for a couple months, then stop, then start up again, and so on and so on. I didn't really see any actual physical change in my body until about 2019, 2020. For the first time, friends and family actually started to compliment me and take note of the fact that I was bulking up, putting on some muscle. It felt so good. Finally, I was looking good enough. All of those hours in the gym, all of those peanut butter and banana sandwiches, those chicken dinners, they had all been worth it. I was actually starting to become worth it. But then, the compliments started to slowly drop off. It started to feel as if, hey, I'm not gaining muscle as quickly as I was. I'm definitely not getting compliments as much. It's not really worth it anymore. I started to go to the gym less and less. I was really tired of working out all the time and trying to shove my mouth with food all of the time. I couldn't keep up the pace and as such my muscles slowly started to get smaller again. And to hide myself from these negative emotions, I would start to eat fatty foods that were really bad for me and spend time on Netflix or on social media. But of course, as I scrolled social media, 
I would see ads of people with perfect abs and massive arms living their best life, looking absolutely insane. And this made me feel even worse about myself. So I would start going to the gym and the process would start all over again. I started working out and eating foods I didn't like and it was a feedback loop from hell. I was never satisfied with where I was, never. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've been in a very similar position. You want to exercise more, but you can never really be consistent for more than a couple of months. And whenever you are consistent, you never actually feel as if you've made enough progress for very long until, you know, you want to get reach more goals, gain more weight, or lose more weight. Everyone just talks about how good exercise is for you, physically and mentally. And I started to wonder, if that's true, how come I spend so much time not feeling good enough? I don't enjoy the exercises I'm doing, I don't enjoy the foods that I'm eating, and even whenever I do get the results, I'm not completely satisfied. After pondering on this thought for a few days, it all started to become clear. You see, businesses only make money whenever they solve a specific problem for you. And in the health and fitness space, the problem that they solve for you is you feel unhealthy or you feel ugly. And you want to get rid of this negative feeling, and so you pay them money in exchange for hopefully getting rid of that negative feeling and becoming healthy or becoming good looking. Good looking. But if your problem gets solved simply by exercising, then there's a pretty low ceiling on how much money they can make on you. Really, the only money they can make is off recurring gym memberships and, you know, recurring foods that you might be buying. There's a limit. There's a low ceiling. Whereas, if they can make it so that it feels as if they're solving a problem for you, then you personally decide there's something else. And there's another problem and another problem. And they can keep selling you more and more services. They can sell you on that extra training program. They can sell you on those extra supplements and they can just keep selling you more and more stuff and essentially scale and infinitely because no one in the entire world ever feels as if they're at a good place physically. And this industry is almost just as bad as the lottery or gambling, in my opinion. But what makes the world of health and fitness so especially evil is that it's hidden in a disguise. A disguise that has fooled almost the entire world. And this disguise is that health and fitness is incredibly important and it's incredibly good for you. And if you don't do it, you're really, really lazy, you're not as worthy, and you're probably gonna die super early because of how bad your physical health is and because you're going to be depressed if you don't work out. And the reason that this disguise works so well is because it's mostly true. Not exercising usually leads to negative things like obesity or depression. By not exercising, you are causing yourself unnecessary harm. But, as many of us are aware, people don't just tell straight up lies. That's too easily disproven. People tell half lies, otherwise known as half truths. Where some of the information is true, but they've just changed it a little bit to make themselves sound better or to work more in their favor. And this is exactly what the health and fitness industry is doing. Feeding all of us half truths to keep us feeling insecure and unhappy, always needing more, and while making them billions in the process. So what is this half lie? Well, to put it simply, it's that you need to exercise and do a specific type of exercise to make your body look good. And do you notice the subtle shift? It's very, very subtle. They've just changed the conversation from exercise to keep yourself healthy, physically and mentally, to exercise to making your body look good. And there's a very specific reason that they've changed the conversation in this way. You see, if all you had to do was exercise to keep yourself physically and mentally healthy, that would actually be very, very easily done, as I'll explain in this video. But by making you need to look a certain way, 
They can make it so that 99.9% .9 of the world feels as if they're not where they should be. Because, I don't know if you've ever seen a health and fitness ad, but it's usually people with completely unrealistic body images. You see, especially in the online world, people only share the top 1% of their lives that they want the world to see. You know, all these fake lives they like to show people as if they're living these great, wonderful lives and everything's perfect. Go look at Instagram. Everyone is, only shows the top 1% of what they want people to see. But the problem with the health and fitness space is that for most of those ads, you're also only seeing the top 1% of the world. And they're only showing you the top 1% of what they want you to see. Meaning you're only seeing the top 1% of the top 1% of the world. Meaning that almost everyone is going to not feel good enough. They're always going to feel as if their body isn't quite where it should be. Or in some cases, is nowhere near as good as it should be. And this way, they can keep bringing you back because you feel as if you've got so much progress to make until you're actually working out correctly. And this is how they scaled to a $702 billion industry. And so while yes, most of the world will eventually start exercising because they're constantly comparing themselves to these totally unrealistic images, instead of doing exercises they enjoy or eating healthy foods they enjoy, they start doing very, very specific exercises to try and maximize their ability to reach those unrealistic body images. And you might say, hey, they're taking care of their body and they're going to over time feel more secure than themselves. What's the harm? And I can kind of understand this argument. Doing this type of exercising is definitely better than doing nothing. But this type of exercising when you try to make your body look as if it's got chiseled abs and boulders for biceps, it's usually not as healthy as you actually think. And as I talked about before, you're never going to actually feel secure enough, no matter how much you exercise or diet. You see, something happens whenever you base your happiness entirely on a certain result. Instead of operating from a base of deep satisfaction where you just feel good about yourself, you operate from a base of insecurity and not feeling good. Let me draw a graph to help illustrate my point. So this is our graph of happiness over time. And you know, if we're going to work out and let's say our goal is to lose weight, we start doing exercises that we don't like and we start eating what we don't like. Well, first of all, we're going to operate from a pretty low happiness level just because, you know, that's how we're going to be. The only reason you're exercising is because you feel like you're unhealthy and ugly, so you're going to be starting off pretty unhealthy. And then as you do exercises you don't like and eat food you don't like, your happiness level is probably going to go down a little bit, not much, but a little. And the occasional little spike of happiness will come with endorphins. Every time you work out, you will get a little endorphin hit. It's not going to be much. It's really not as much as people say it is, but there definitely is something there. So, you know, you, overall, you're kind of going down with a few little hits every time you work out, even though those endorphin hits come from any type of exercise. And as you can see, overall, you're operating from a pretty low base of happiness. And then maybe you reach your weight goal and you feel really, really, really good, right? Uh, but then you feel just as bad as you were before and it drops, their happiness level drops down just as quickly. And that's because your body will get used to this. This is a result, not a process. And this is kind of like pleasure chasing. It's very short term happiness. You know, reaching a certain weight is not gonna make you happy for your entire life. So you're eventually gonna return back to normal happiness level. And one of two things is going to happen. Either you're gonna kind of stop caring as much about working out and you're gonna gradually work out less and put on, you know, start eating more unhealthy foods and, your weight's going to be put back on again slowly, which is going to cause your happiness level to actually go much lower than it was before. Or maybe that doesn't happen, and maybe you pin your happiness on the next week, in which case it always continues over and over again. Results make up a very small fraction of the experience. 90% of any experience is the process, actually doing the thing, exercising, dieting, the actual process of doing those things makes up 98% of losing weight. People who do something solely for the results, solely just to lose weight, to look better, will spend so much of their life, literally 98% of their life, anxious and completely unsatisfied. 
they will be constantly looking for these little hits of dopamine and endorphins, constantly chasing the next hit of getting a compliment, right? Getting a compliment could give you that. Reaching your goal, you know, reaching your goal will give you that. And they're just gonna constantly chase these little hits of pleasure, but spending most of the time very unsatisfied and unhappy. Yes, you probably are physically healthier than you were before you started working out, but at a serious cost to your mental health. Plus, your diet probably isn't as healthy as you think. If you're trying to bulk, you likely eat way too much food than is healthy for your body, and if you're trying to thin down, you're probably eating way too little food than is healthy for your body. Now, I'm not saying bulking up or thinning down is just objectively bad things. Done over a long enough period of time in a controlled manner, it's very healthy for most people. But whenever you try and just rapidly lose weight or rapidly gain weight, which is what most people who are results focused are doing, it's really not that healthy for your body. So doing this type of results focused exercise is better than nothing. It's really not as physically healthy for you as you probably tell yourself. I can already hear people typing in the comments, but look, at least they're doing something. These people would not do any form of exercise otherwise. They're doing the right thing for the wrong reasons, but that's okay, they're still doing the right thing. Just leave them alone. And while I totally understand this point of view, I definitely disagree. As I've already stated, the impact this has on your mental health is astronomically bad. But even beyond that, working out from a purely physical perspective for these reasons is dumb. And not just because it's kind of unhealthy to put on weight, but because doing this type of results focused exercising is going to make you incredibly likely to procrastinate on exercise and be very inconsistent in the long term. Very inconsistent. And this is because you don't naturally enjoy the exercise that you're doing. You know, that workout routine that your bulking program or weight loss program has given you, you just don't naturally enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy something, you're just going to procrastinate over it eventually. It's just the way it is. And any bodybuilders or models or people who you see who have incredible results and have been consistent over the long term, I'm telling you, they naturally enjoy those types of workouts, such as lifting weights or going for runs. And I don't mean that fake, oh, I love working out type of thing, where really they just love the idea of working out and being someone who works out and maybe those little hits of endorphins. No, I mean they genuinely enjoy the process of lifting weights or running, whatever it is. They genuinely enjoy that as well as enjoying being someone who exercises and enjoys the endorphins and all that. Studies have proven time and time again, the only people who are able to be consistent with their exercise are the people who actually enjoy the process itself and aren't just results focused. They actually genuinely enjoy, regardless of results, the thing, the actual exercise that they are doing. And I mean, they love the results as well, obviously, but they don't just love the results. They also love the workout, the process. You see where this is going? And just like how not everyone in the world is gonna have the exact same dream job, you know, some people would love to be an actor, some people would love to be physicists, right? Astronauts, whatever. Not everyone in the world is going to have the exact same dream workout. And if you don't naturally enjoy lifting weights or going for runs or whatever your workout program is trying to tell you to do, you're never going to be consistent with it in the long term. You just aren't. So, to recap, you will procrastinate on exercising in the long term because you're probably doing an exercise that you don't naturally enjoy. You'll never feel good enough for more than a few brief moments. You'll always have another goal or you'll stop caring and lose all of your progress and then feel even worse about yourself. You're actually doing a lot of harm to your body if you try to put on weight or lose weight very quickly, which is what most results focused people will do. People with super fast changes will normally put their weight back on just as quickly as they lost it, and potentially put even more weight back on because their metabolism has not dropped. So, what should be done instead? How can we change this graph so that we operate from a base, our standard day-to-day -day life is from a really high, deep satisfaction level? To find the answer, we must look back at our ancestors. 
you got some random person from a couple hundred years ago and told them that you exercise to get in shape, they would have no idea what you were talking about. Literally, they would have no idea. They all got exercise naturally from doing work, surviving, right? Well, you can do the exact same thing nowadays, but instead of work, through play. Follow your curiosity and find an exercise that you genuinely really enjoy, that doesn't feel as if you're actually exercising. It's similar to whenever people get their dream job and it doesn't feel like they're working. Everyone has a dream exercise that doesn't feel like exercise that they just do hope. And lifting weights and doing cardio is the equivalent to a boring office job for most people because it feels like work. It just doesn't satisfy you. So go out there and find something that feels like play. Something that just has the byproduct of the exercise. If you want to lose weight, try going on regular walks with your friends. I've literally walked up mountains, walked so many miles and not even realized it just by walking with my friends. You're talking to them and you don't even realize that you're exercising. Compare that to you know, going on a sprint for you know, 30 minutes or sitting on a treadmill. Maybe you want to play a sport like football or rugby and that's totally fine too. Whatever just feels like play, just go on an experiment. Now because I am such a skinny guy, I can't do too many cardio activities or else you know I am going to end up losing too much weight. I need to find stuff that helps me bulk up. But there's totally plenty of options for that as well. You know, archery, um, rock climbing, those are the two main ones that interest me. But there's plenty of others if you want to bulk up. Plenty of sports that have the byproduct of building muscle. And the cool thing is that in between these sessions, I might actually want to go work out and lift weights for fun to improve my performance at that sport. Then even lifting weights starts to feel like play because I'm not focused on getting that result. I'm focused on just improving my performance. It's not out of insecurity of my body. It's out of the love for another sport that I'm doing. And what about that insecurity? Won't it still be there? You know, at least with lifting weights, that insecurity would get away faster. But all this other stuff, it's going to take a lot longer for you to see results, right? Well, look, that insecurity is never going to go away unless you understand these two core principles. Number one, it doesn't matter how good your body looks. You're always going to want it to look better and you're never going to feel totally secure in your body. Number two, the only way to completely satisfy this need and operate from a base of deep happiness is to genuinely not care what other people think. Stop comparing yourself to others and just be fulfilled in yourself. You see, the man who doesn't need anything from anyone, who doesn't compare himself to others, who doesn't need validation or compliments from other people, will operate from a base of deep satisfaction. The fact that he gets to do something he loves every day, that he enjoys his exercise, means that he will be completely satisfied. And when he does get compliments and little moments of validation, he still takes them, he still likes them. But the difference is he doesn't need them because his base happiness is already so high. He's never depending on them to keep pulling him through to exercise. He already exercises because he loves it. And all those extra benefits, like people complimenting him and telling him he looks good, that's just a byproduct. This man never procrastinates on exercising because he genuinely just loves doing it. And because of this, he's gonna be very consistent over a long period of time and eventually his body is going to get into very good shape. It's going to be incredibly healthy. Not necessarily like chiseled six pack abs and boulder biceps or anything like that, but he's going to be healthy and his results that he does get are going to stick. And he doesn't waste his time looking at ads and posts of the top 1% of the top 1% of the world. He's just happy with who he is. He doesn't exercise because he hates his body. He exercises because he loves his body and because he loves the sport that he's doing. Now, some people may take this as me demonizing lifting weights or doing cardio, and that's not necessarily true at all. As I said earlier, some people genuinely love lifting weights or, you know, in the house cardio, whatever, and that's totally fine. If that's you and you know deep down that you genuinely love doing those things, then go on, keep doing them. That's awesome. But for most people, if you're being honest with yourself, you only do those things out of insecurity, not because you actually enjoy them. And chances are, you're probably in a lot better shape than you think you are anyway. Whenever you realize that you're comparing yourself to the top 1% of the 1% and start looking at the world as a whole, you actually are in pretty good shape.
So go out there and have some fun. Go do exercises that feels like play because you only have one body. It's important that you take care of it. I don't mean make your body look good. I mean make your body feel good. Check in every once in a while and see how healthy your body is, not how good your body looks. And of course, all of this can be applied to diets as well. Don't go on crazy strict diets that you don't like. Just eat healthy foods that you enjoy. Foods are a luxury, okay? Just find alternatives to what you already like that is somewhat healthy. Chances are, if you're watching this, you probably have access to the internet, which means you can go online and find online stores that will provide healthy alternatives to whatever your favorite foods are. At the end of the day, life is about the journey, not the destination. So don't get hung up on results or comparing yourself to others. But it is important that you take care of your physical and mental health by exercise. But that doesn't mean you have to do the same thing that everyone else does. Find your own path. Find an exercise that doesn't feel like exercise. Find healthy foods that don't feel as if you're on a crazy strict diet. Because at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what we look like. A heavy person is just as worthy as someone who has chiseled abs. But we should still take care of our bodies. The only difference is we should be working out because we love our bodies, not because we hate them.